Welcome to Carnivore Wellness. My name is Rebecca. Today, I want to share with you my biggest mistake on carnivore. I am coming up on the two-year mark. That'll be June 10th for me of 2024. And I did not realize that I was making this mistake relatively consistently from the beginning of my carnivore journey until recently. So I want to share that with you. I do want to preface this video by saying if you are new to carnivore and you're in the healing phase, this video and this information may not be for you. There might be some grains of wisdom in here that will benefit you, but by and large, if you are still in the process of healing, what I am going to share in this video may not directly apply to you. When you're initially coming to carnivore and you're initially healing, you need nutrient-dense food, your body is desperate for adequate nutrition, and you may need more than what I am going to speak about in this video. My biggest mistake on carnivore was eating too much protein at a very consistent rate. So what do I mean by that? Typically, it is recommended that you eat about one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. According to my height, 5'7", my ideal body weight is 135 pounds. So for me, that would mean that 135 grams of protein a day is what would be recommended for me in maintaining my healed body. Now, again, if you are new to carnivore, you may need a lot more healing and your body may need more amino acid building blocks to be able to heal and repair. So you may need more protein. And oftentimes this is the case. When folks are new to carnivore, they need more nutrients because their body is working overtime to heal and repair. However, as mentioned, I am coming up on that two-year mark of carnivore. I have done so much healing, and I know that healing will continue, but on a smaller scale, and I no longer need these huge amounts of protein in order to fuel repair and, and healing. So for me, over the last year and a half plus, I have largely eaten too much protein most days. Even though I knew that I should only be having 135 grams of protein, I oftentimes exceeded that to intake well over 200, 250, 300 grams of protein a day, I can put the meat away. I absolutely can. But in doing so, I come from a background of being insulin resistant. Before I was carnivore, I was a raging sugar addict. I also used to regularly ingest copious amounts of alcohol. Uh, I also leaned heavily on coffee to help me get through the day, regulate my mood and energy. That increase in cortisol was increasing my blood glucose, was increasing my insulin. I have definitely been insulin resistant for large periods of time of my life before coming to keto and then carnivore. So that insulin resistance piece, I don't know that it ever really went away. And this is why. So my light bulb moment came in a, uh, a recent carnivore wellness community book club meeting. So I've created an online community where carnivores can come, hang out, talk. We host weekly meetings. And part of that membership program is we have a book club. And we read this book by Dr. Ben Bickman in March. And in this book, Why We Get Sick, phenomenal read, by the way, um, he addresses insulin resistance and points to that as being the root cause of pretty much all metabolic disease. And as I was reading through this book, I realized, wait a minute, I actually still, even a year and a half on carnivore, have a lot of these insulin resistance symptoms. For example, I have more fat around my belly. I, I have gained weight since starting carnivore. Um, that's not typical. Most people lose weight, but I've gained weight. Now, that has also come with a lot of benefits, hormonal healing, digestive health, and healing repair. My mood is so greatly improved. It's absolutely worth every pound gained. However, a lot of the fat that I've gained has deposited in my belly, and that is one of the things that he references very early in the book when he asks a series of questions. You know, and if you have more fat around your belly than you would like, that could be a sign of insulin resistance. And I have seen that in myself. Now, a few others he talks about is you retain water easily. 
Now, I'm not saying that you should step on the scale all the time. I, for the longest time, did not step on the scale, but I did, you know, start stepping on the scale towards the end of 2023. You know, back in December, I was, you know, trying to make some weight loss efforts, and I noticed that my weight really fluctuated from day to day. That's not an increase in fat and muscle overnight. It's water weight. So I definitely fall into that category of retaining water easily. The third thing, and something that I have been hoping and praying that carnivore would take care of from the beginning is the KP, keratosis pilaris. It is like this, the little red bumps, like strawberry skin that you can get on the backs of your arms, your legs. A lot of times, this KP is a result of insulin resistance in the body. And I just have not understood why is the KP not resolving itself when it's pretty much in most people caused by insulin resistance, I should be insulin resistant at this point because I've been carnivore for so long. I haven't been having carbs, but guess what I've been doing? I've been having too much protein. So those are uh, th- the first three things, you know, more fat around my belly, retaining water weight, the, the KP skin condition on the backs of my arms and legs. And also, honestly, sometimes I feel sluggish after a meal. Now, if I just have a small, reasonably portioned meal, I don't feel sluggish. But sometimes my hunger has driven me to eat, I don't know, two ribeyes in one sitting. And then surprisingly, not so surprisingly, I feel really sluggish and tired after that meal. I just want to go lay down. That's actually a sign of insulin resistance. So that leads me to my fifth thing, which is, you know, uh, the hunger. I have had pretty much an insatiable hunger. And honestly, Throughout most of my carnivore journey, I have taken the advice of eat until you're comfortably stuffed to heart. I have leaned into honoring my hunger and becoming fully nourished and eating to satiety. But I have this background of being insulin resistant. I also have a background of binge eating and emotional eating. So with all those factors combined, I have consistently eaten very big meals. Now, for some people, again, especially at the beginning of your healing journey, that might be appropriate. But for me, at this point, coming closer to the two-year mark, I should not necessarily have this raging hunger that goes on unmitigated day after day. So in reading this book, Why We Get Sick, I, number one, identified that I think I'm still struggling with insulin resistance. Which leads me to then question, well, why do I have insulin resistance if I've been carnivore? I have not had any non-carnivore carbs in almost two years. So where is this rise in insulin coming from? Why hasn't this resolved itself by now? And it all goes back to having too much protein. Now, we know that fat is not insulinogenic. It is not going to raise your insulin. Carbs, they definitely are going to raise your insulin. So that's why many of us avoid them. You know, it leads to inflammation in our body. It leads to insulin resistance and then a myriad of diseases as discussed in this awesome book. However, protein can be insulinogenic. It's not nearly as much so as the carbs are. However, it can raise your blood glucose levels, especially if you overconsume protein because the body will then take the excess protein and through a process of gluconeogenesis, convert that protein into sugar. However, by consistently overeating protein, I've been consistently raising my blood sugar, which is consistently keeping me insulin resistant, which is why I've gained weight. It's why my hunger stays high. It's why my KP hasn't resolved. It's why my body's been storing fat in my belly. So this has been a big revelation to me. And I have really had to reevaluate some of the things that I first thought. As mentioned, you know, common advice is eat until you're comfortably stuffed. And that advice works and holds true for a lot of people. You might be one of them. If so, put it in the comments below. I'd love to know who is doing well with that advice of eating till you're comfortably stuffed. But for people like me who have that history of overeating and, and eating emotionally and also being insulin resistant, that excess protein quickly turns into sugar in my body. I noticed this early on in my carnivore journey in a period of time where I was doing a a protocol in which I was trying to become fully nourished so that I could then go into a fasting protocol. And during that time, I was eating excess amounts of protein. 
I went from doing carnivore on my own, eating about two meals a day, eating to satiety, and that felt really good. But when I went into this priming protocol, I really wanted to do it right. And so I followed the advice I was given, and I did eat more than needed. And within about a week or so, I felt a shift. I could tell my body was out of ketosis because I wasn't having the mental common clarity. Uh, my sleep suddenly was disturbed. And also, I started ha- almost going backwards in my carnivore progress in that it seemed like I was no longer in a fat burning mode. My fat burning adaptation seemed to come back despite the fact that I had been ketogenic for five and a half months prior to starting carnivore. And what really changed around that time was that I started eating excess amounts of meat, i.e. excess amounts of protein. And then I just continued on with this, thinking that I needed to continue to eat more and more so that I could heal because clearly my body wasn't healing if I was still super fatigued and needing naps every afternoon and my body still needed more healing if I still had ravenous hunger that I couldn't get under control and surely I still needed more healing if I had low energy. So all of this, you know, I, I just did not know and or I didn't want to know that I shouldn't be eating three, four pounds of meat a day. I, I liked to eat. Let me really emphasize that. I can eat and put away a lot of food and I enjoy that process like many of us. Um, so that was my wake up call. This light bulb moment was reading this book, Why We Get Sick. I'm so thankful to my fellow community members in the carnivore wellness community for having these discussions and helping me bring awareness to this this uh, oversight in my own approach to carnivore. The main symptom, I've, I've already touched on this, but I just really want to hammer this home, was the nonstop hunger. And that kept me in this vicious cycle of, I'm so hungry, so I'm going to eat a lot. But then I'd eat a lot, too much protein, and then that would raise my blood glucose, raise my insulin, and then as soon as that would come back down, here's the hunger roaring back again. So it was this nonstop cycle. So this whole time I thought I was honoring my hunger, eating to satiety, but really I was just still on this roller coaster caused by this long held insulin resistance. So instead I started to ask the question, how can I regulate my hunger? And that led me to look at this part of my dietary intake. Look at protein. How much am I getting? I've mentioned before it was around like 200, 250, 300 grams of protein too much protein. And yes, I was working out. I'm an active person and lifting weights, but that's still too much protein. And I think my body was shuttling it into sugar and therefore then causing me to store most of my incoming caloric intake, most of my energy that I'm taking in. And so I began to ask, how can I regulate my hunger? So I started doing more of an 80-20 approach or 70-30. And by that, I mean about 80% uh, of my energy needs from fat and 20% from protein. And in doing that, I also tried to make sure that that protein did not exceed that number of grams of protein per pound of ideal body weight. It was really, really hard for me to keep my grams of protein that low. I know some people struggle to raise their grams of protein to that amount. I, I talk with them in my community. There are some people who cannot eat more. They feel so full. Trying to get in that much protein is a challenge. So what I'm talking about is not necessarily a problem for everyone or even most people. But for those of us who struggle with that, this may be an area where you might want to pay some attention. So I had to use a tracking app. I use Carb Manager. You can use Chronometer or whatever works well for you. And I I tracked my daily intake of my grams of protein. And what I did was I said to myself, I can eat this number of grams of protein. And if I'm still hungry... I allowed myself to eat as much fat as I needed to reach that fully sated, satiated point. And that worked and worked well enough. But guess what? I found that I was still really hungry to the point that I was eating so much fat in order to feel satiated that I was regularly pushing 3,500 calories a day, 4,000 calories a day, I just shouldn't need that much for maintenance. And I didn't. I was seeing the scale start to slowly creep back up. So it's really frustrating for me. Okay, I've lowered my protein and I have, you know, and I'm rounding out my hunger with with fat, which is appropriate. And again, I think for a lot of people, that would be enough of a step. I think just taking that step alone 
would be good enough. But for me, that wasn't enough. So I got really curious, what can I do to lower my insulin resistance? How can I nip this problem in the bud? Because I, you know, I've been doing this for close to two years and I'm not seeing the results that I want. And it's not good for the body to be in a, an insulin resistant state for so long. This is definitely an area of healing that I need to give attention to and I need to be able to work on. So I started to look into fasting. <gasps> okay, if you're familiar with my story, you know that I've gone through a period of time where I overfasted. I tanked my hormones. I totally undid a lot of the good work I'd done for healing on carnivore. Why in the world would I even consider fasting again? I'll tell you why. Because I think it's important for us to stay curious, to stay open-minded. And just because something didn't work for you at a certain period of time doesn't mean you should throw it out all in entirely. Perhaps there's something there that you can revisit. So I looked back into a, a book that I've read previously. Let me grab it. This book, Fast Like a Girl by Dr. Mindy Pels. Now, at the time that I went through my overfasting experience, I actually read this book about how to fast in alignment with your hormones, but I did not heed her advice. Instead of, you know, alternating the times of the month that I was fasting, I just continued to plow forward with a fasting protocol because I was under the belief and assumption that I was fully nourished, my body could handle it, and I would be a-okay. Well, that, you know, caused me to crash and burn, set me back. I spent the next six months really trying to recover and and hang on to, you know, this carnivore lifestyle. And I did. I came back to a place of peace and healing. And it's it's all fine. And I'm really grateful for that part of my journey because it taught me so many valuable lessons about fasting and about what to look out for so that I don't find myself making those same mistakes in the future. But I just, it a lot of her information and a lot of information from Dr. Jason Funk. He is well known in our low carb spaces for for his fasting and his you know promotion of even intermittent fasting as a way of therapeutically addressing insulin resistance. He works with a lot of diabetics and is able to bring down their insulin levels such that they can have regulated blood sugar and that's so important for us. So, he uses fasting. Dr. Mindy Pelz uses fasting. Why should I not consider using fasting when I'm clearly battling this insulin resistance and I don't seem to be able to improve it with simply making the dietary changes in my macros. You know, I made those changes for, I looked at it, close to a month, at least a solid three weeks, and I still just had this ravenous hunger. Now that I am at a place where I am considering using fasting as a therapeutic tool to lower my insulin resistance... I am going to make sure that I do that in a way that is hormonally supportive. So I will definitely be talking about that in future videos. But really, go to the source yourself. Dr. Mindy Pels, this woman is on a mission to get millions of people fasting. She's doing it. She's so great in explaining how to fast in alignment with your hormones. And so I have been using her principles over the last month or so as I have started stepping into fasting. While I am going to go back and revisit a tool that did not work for me at the time, I'm going to implement it in a way that is different, that's more sustainable, that will be, you know, hopefully supportive of healthy hormonal regulation. But ultimately, what I keep learning about fasting is that it is a very powerful tool for lowering insulin resistance. For me, that is what I'm dealing with. I've been having too much protein on a consistent basis. I have remained insulin resistant. I need to get that insulin resistance piece settled and, and get back to a place where I am more insulin sensitive so that my body can step into these next phases of healing that I know await me. Again, I've been driven by curiosity and a willingness to always be open-minded and to continue to question my own approach to carnivore. I know I've given out information in previous videos saying, eat until you're comfortably stuffed. And yes, that might work for you, might work for a lot of people. But I absolutely believe that, you know, I'm, I'm on a journey. I'm trying to figure things out. And sometimes that requires calling into question things that we've previously decided aren't for us. So I'm curious, where have you changed your mindset in some of your dietary or lifestyle approaches 
What are you doing differently? What was a big eye-opening understanding for you? So for me, it has been this, this protein piece. And again, not everyone has this issue. Not everyone, you know, overconsumes protein and then automatically turns it into sugar. But I do. If you don't, if you do, put it in the comments. I really think this could open up a good discussion that could allow some people to think differently about the ratios of the food that they're consuming while on a carnivore diet. It can be very protein heavy and for a lot of folks that works, but for some of us, maybe that's not the answer and we need to make sure that we're leaning more on the animal fats and and getting more of our nutritional needs met through the fat. So very curious. I'd love to hear from you. Also, I just want to throw this out there. If you would like to be in community with fellow carnivores, meat-based eaters, maybe you're not strict carnivore, that's a-okay. We would love to have you join the carnivore wellness community. We have rich discussions held three times a week, bi-monthly book club, usually picking books that really help us, you know, learn more about this lifestyle, mindset, things that can help us on our journeys. Clearly, I benefited personally from this book, from the the March book club, and I'm so grateful for those discussions that we hold there. So if that sounds like something you'd like to join, you're welcome to click the link down below. And uh, if this has been helpful for you, if you think you know of somebody who might, you know, benefit from hearing this information, share it with a friend, like the video, subscribe if you don't want to miss out. In the next video, I will be talking about my early fasting experiences and and how that has panned out for me so far. So don't miss that. Subscribe. I will, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for spending this time with me.